You're on, bro. I can see you. All that's, right, good. That's a nice torso shot. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm going to grab a beer. Yeah, right on. What's up, y'all? 
I'm chilling out in the little screen today, and it's still light at Luca's place. And he's uh, he's grabbing his gear. Open one up. Cheers, dude. Cheers to you. I got a little. I got a little fancy. I got a little pinky up. A little foo foo. Uh, let me run through. Let me run through this real quick. I first want to make sure that we got an audio check one two one two, because I went fancy today trying to make this happen, making sure we have some decent audio. Lucas got a little pooch. Braveheart, you were on early. Rusty Carlos, Jale, Tech. I don't know that you've been on before, so that's awesome. Mr. Saltfish, hello, sir. Chris, Mario, Lauren, how are you? Simple Aquariums, good morning. Poor Man's Reef, hello. What up, Bert? I figured you were going to jump on. Happy that you're here. Adrian, you're one of the kindest humans. Thank you for being here. Rob, good to see you. We got a bunch of people in here. Cam, Clevin. I always say that wrong. It's like Clevin. Chris Clevin. He's been hooking up Lynn ne Reef Nerd with a whole bunch of uh, 3D printed goodies, and Lynn has been taking care of him. So, Jim, oh. I saw I saw that peacup frag holder. Yeah, dude. Are you kidding me? He Ooh. sent he sent me uh, before I came on. He sent me a message. Somebody, somebody, make somebody tell me that our audio is looking good. He sent me a message that showed one with with Telegram on it. I was like, ah, look at you. I need to get the shipping. I think he's going to hook me up and I'll do some printing. Yeah, he's he's solid. I owe him a Quanta Pro so he can uh, do measurements and we can get fancy with it. Oh, that's fancy cool. mounting. Yeah, I he's know. a he's a he's a pro. He's a pro. Tell me about your day, dude. My day. Well, my son, he dropped the Wu Tang on this poor wide receiver and and crushed his soul. <laughs> <laughs> so then uh, after we won that game, I went to my daughter's um, soccer game, and that was good. Then we went to the bar with the team. Yep. You know, so it was a good. It was a good day. Um, got back from musky fishing. I know you frequent the North Woods, so you know what I mean. I do. How'd you do? We got five. Nothing to speak of, really, for size. Yep. Um, so uh, we caught some big old bass, though. How was your day? Uh, first, I have not caught a muskie, and my son has caught a tiger muskie and a legit muskie, and he sucks because he is crush <laughs> he's crushing my soul. Uh, my day was good. We had – so those <sighs> – my kid does, like, two things. One, he kind of likes – not really. He claims he doesn't, but I think he does. And one he enjoys. So cross crunch, cross, <laughs> crunch, uh, cross country. <laughs> it's not cross crunchy. It's cross country and swimming. Um, both of those yeah. require a lot of nothing from the parentals. We just sort of sit there all and day. Cheer. All day. It's just so boring. Uh, I think cross crunchy which is how I'm going to roll now, is yeah. uh, more boring than a swim meet. But uh, they had a good time. The, the girls yeah. took girls took first place. This was a huge – there was a whole bunch of teams. The girls took first. The boys took second. Uh, and, and it was – it was it was, <laughs> it was a ridiculously hilly course. My, oh. kid, my kid gets back, and he's like, oh, that sucked. But they had a good race. They had some fun. I have a – I have an uh, interesting story about um, cross country. So, um, I was cordially not asked to. Re I was cordially asked not to return to the football team. So then, little Lukey went and played cross country for a year. Crunchy. Turns out there's a lot of um, females in that sport. So I was really thoroughly enjoying myself. Got asked not to come back to that. Mm -hmm. And then I played volleyball for the last two years. So that's my. <laughs> That's a hard sport, dude. It's, it uh, sucks. So he oh. swims, right? He's, he has been in the pool since he's yep. two. He's got good lungs. He's not a fan of running, um, but because he has the lungs, he can pull it off. Agreed. You know, uh, the two sports he does in, involves uh, those of the opposite sex scantily clad. Yeah. I'm not sure he's making is. bad choices. No. No. My son swims. I think, you know, uh, mm -hmm. My son swims too, and um, 
he's he's pretty decent, but my daughter, my wife swam for the Badgers. Okay. So um, finally, she just finally is like, fine, I'll swim. And she is like, <laughs> she is crazy good. That's so awesome. yeah, I don't know. They're not my kids. I don't know where they come from. I can't swim across the lake, man. I'll die. <laughs> See, I did that business for a little while, and then – I mean, I keep talking about it. I'm that I'm that old guy that was like eight years ago. I did an Iron Man, and I knew I could do it. But then I I've done nothing ever since. Right? I mean, I could go swim, but now I don't. Oh, I gave that's up. good. At some point, I mean, you've not given up. Obviously, I've given up. Ah, oh, but, but it's yeah, I okay. still play football, man. I feel old though. I'm 41. I feel old enough <laughs> to play games, so maybe I'll give it up soon too. I'm sneaking up on the five five. I'm not giving this up, though, Jimmy. What do you got going on there? Talk to me, Goose. We got potassium nitrate for my my boys due to energy. This is a free fluencer plug. Uh huh. I get paid nothing for this. Yep. This 10-pound bag with shipping cost me $2.40 a pound. And the equivalent reef targeted is how much? Uh, uh, 10, 10 a pound. <laughs> um, and do you see this actually? Yeah. It's 99, eight. Gosh. Do you think there's any rocks or bugs in there? Um, well, shall we open it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, those and, rocks and rocks and bugs are buggers. You know, I think it adds to the trace minerals. Is that what it, it that's what it does? It I feel uh, like there's no bugs in it. That's what um, it is. That's see. That's why the reefing stuff costs so much, uh, because it opens easier. That's probably it. It's about um, the container. You know, uh, I, I there's some kind of diesel energy. I don't even understand what they do, but they have like really high purity products for like really cheap. And I I was asking them like 99.8 normally is pharma at yeah, that point yeah yeah that's uh certainly reagent plus it's reagent and that's what it is it's so it's not certified so it's reagent plus yep which is good enough for us i right, man i'll take some food on up i'll take food grade all day long did you see what oh. i posted about the the stupid calc i've got 5.5 years out of a 50 pound bag at my current dose <laughs> and it costs 110 dollars <laughs> Com- uh. comparable Comparable, uh, you know, reefing branded was uh, close to 400. I get excited. Um, and then I can get you, oh, we yeah. can get that, that 50 pound now from Northwest Concentrates for about 80. So that's a slight improvement. What that's is my good. dog doing? I'm going to go give my dog some water so it stops. All right. 5.5 years of that business. All right. Here's what we're talking about. Don't tell Luca, but he's paying attention. But don't tell him anyway. We're going to talk about how influencers aren't bad, right? Yes. Uh, We're influencers, Jim. I know. I don't claim it. I'm just some old guy who, instead of yelling at the kids to get off my damn yard, <laughs> I do I do this. <laughs> um, influencers aren't bad. Influencers aren't bad. Influencers aren't bad. Look, I Beetlejuiced it, and so now it really, really matters. Uh, but a big one yes. for me is fessing up when you get something for free. Yes. One should fess up when they get something for free. By the way, that's getting paid. Tell me what you think about that. So I think re- influencers are good, just like you. I have crazy mad respect for the ones that openly talk about this is for free. This is a sponsored post. And yeah. I can't tell you enough. I want to start telling people about these people because they are good, good humans. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm on the same page as you, Jim. Um, however, if you want to get taxi and I like getting taxi. So, um, you know, people have their own thoughts, but when the U S government considers gifts or subsidized products as taxable income, you can't argue you're getting paid. Just own it. You're getting, getting paid. paid for it and and announce it. That's yep. all. Agreed. Like and you know, you can do it a lot of different ways. Like um like Jim, I'm gonna send you one of these 
to test. I'm going to send you uh -oh. shameless plug. Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. Does, this, does look, it have your look, name look on I, it? Can you put a sticker on it? What do you? I'm sorry. I got light. <laughs> um, what are those? Which ones are those? These are the the Quantas. These are the true, true ultimate budget. Um, Really simple lights, but they're fully waterproof, so your your plug goes in here. This is you see, a I'm waterproof. Sco I'm, sco I'm scooching up because this is the first time I've seen it. This is a waterproof cap, so this you can actually link multiple ones together, so mm -hmm. you can have one cord and light your whole tank. And I'll show you the four footer is actually rigged up. So this is the core. This is this is beefy, dude. Yeah, dude. For a budget, that's yep. beef. You see like this it. cord? Yep. It's not bad. But again, you could link, and you can link a two footer with a. I mean, I don't know why you do this, but you could link these two together. I mean, what whatever you, you want to do. Yeah, yeah. So, how long does that thing go? The four is the longest. The four is the longest. So, if you wanted to light um, a six foot, that's what you would do, right? Oh man, you're smart. You get paid the big. Look, the I did footer, math. I did math. I have a the business. The four footer degree. has three wide array. So technically, this is your most efficient light of them. So um, the four is my favorite. Um, but what we did on the two and the three is we just got juicier LEDs to handle the more current. Um, yeah, these run cool. cool, but yeah, so same as plug, but like if I, I'm going to send you these to test and I will pay for shipping and then I will ask you to return them because I think that is a set in the course for scientific study. I yep. will not get you out of pocket but i respect your testing skills and your independent nature of testing that isn't influencing i'm taking this shit back you can't have it now if i were to say hey yo jimmy um what you and your boys need for your tanks i got you i just need i need a review on it that would be free, free product at that point that would be free product and therefore i should technically as the person giving you free product should be telling the I should be sending a tax form to you at the end of the year. Roger that. That is actually the responsibility of the company that is doing these things. Interesting note. Let me make a point real quick. Bert, Carlos, as far as I'm concerned, is already an influencer. It's not the, it's not the fact that he does not receive free products that makes or breaks an influencer as far as I'm concerned. Dude's got a sweet tank. Dude offers information online. Dude is very open and helpful about his information. He yep. influenced my existence. I consider him an influencer. He absolutely funds his own stuff. For the most... So, go ahead. Is he a free-fluencer? He, he may be a free-fluencer. Tell me about free-fluencing. <laughs> so Jim, uh, wait, can we go back to the part where you like my light testing? No, that's for another time. Go ahead. Well, actually, yes, I do want to give you my lights to test and, um, I'm going to give you the pros and, um, I am looking forward to your testing because I respect BRS's opinion about water tank testing, which by the way, yeah, actually furthers the value proposition of my lights. Cause mm -hmm. then when you start comparing that data to their data this budget thing becomes even more budget um but i i like open air it takes all the variables out jim and if you're in a scientific if you believe in science you want to eliminate all testing variables am i, I right or am i wrong that's what i do i know i just have a business degree but it kind of makes sense that's the that's the troubleshooter in me right if i have something broken i split it in half and i was like which half works which half doesn't that's me removing every everything from the equation that is unnecessary as far as I'm yep. concerned when it comes to testing lights. I respect, and I agree with you, I respect BRS's position. I respect the way they test lights. You'll also yep. find out that they did not test the Reef Bright or the Orfix using the same protocol that they tested all the other lights. I think yes. maybe you'll be able to provide that data. You know, okay, so here's what I struggle with, Jim. And, you know, I'm looking to the team, our, our little fam online right now. Yep. I mean, there's, there's, some, there's, some, there's some soldiers here, right? Like, we all support each other, and, you know, there's no one here 
doing hashtags that are uh, passive aggressive. You know, I love this. Uh, we're going to talk more about that too, Jim. Yeah. I want to talk about bullying and, and the psychology of bullying. Yeah, cool. So I am always interested in the inconsistencies of continuity with BRS. I respect them. I like it. But weird things get left out. And so where I'm going with this, Jim, is I don't know if I want to test other lights against mine. I, I think it opens a can of worms. I have Orphix. I have reef brights part of me wants to do it but some of the some of the instagram fam is like luca don't even don't even go there yep just put your data out there with your spectrum and and just let others compare so this is where i would personally rather say jim i am no longer a free influencer when it comes to lights that is completely obvious i am going to start selling lights yep so I almost kind of dig the whole, um, um, oh my God, this dog <laughs> idea of you, me giving you the different lights and then using your data. And I'm going to actually contact BRS and yep. I'm going to ask them if they want to test mine. I'm going to take my dog out so it doesn't poop in my house no, or something. No, it's cool. I, I apologize. My wife is still at the uh, bar. What do you think about that, Jimmy? Though, like, what do you Off think about that idea? Yeah, yeah, dude. You, I don't, I don't think you need to position your lights against. He's probably gone. You think his Bluetooth works that far away? Bro, I can uh, hear you. All right, I don't, I don't, I don't think you as a seller should compare. I think you as a a vendor and yeah, as a provider of lights should say, here's what's up. Here's how I tested. This is what we got going on. And put it out yes. there, but you know damn well I'm going to compare yours to the 24 inch Reef Bright I have, the 24 inch Orphic I have, the 24 inch Ali E bar that I have, because you know I've yes. tested those three already, so I've already got the data. So I'm just waiting for yours, which will be cool. What I like about it is, so this is the 24. It's a little guy. That's cool. Um, what I like about that is, so the Reef Bright, the regular Reef Bright, of course, isn't a direct competitor to this because it's about five times more expensive, whatever the hell they, they charge. Um, but their Lumi Light is more expensive than this, and this has significantly more punch. Yep. So, um, yes. Yeah, and I will tell you, this the, the, the regular Quanta isn't going to blow the doors off of... Um, um, the uh, par that a regular reef bright kicks out, mm -hmm. it'll have the same spread. It'll have less par, but you could buy four of them. And I guess at that point, it would have a whole lot more par. So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see the testing. The four footer, what's kind of saddens me is the four footer is the monster. So this thing, um, this thing might go toe to toe with the reef bright. That's how crazy it is. But I have a four footer and Jim, I have the same setup as you with the, the dark room and I can do all black and, and do the test. So I'm going to do a little testing, but I'm not going to publish any of it. I just need to know and benchmark. Yeah. Um, the one thing I will be doing since, you know, the spectrum blending is what I'm going to be rocking is I'm going to do some spectrum testing of a Orphic compared to mine. And it's going to be very obvious where my technology went. You know what I mean? I'm looking forward to that because I may or may not know what you're talking about, and I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, hey, Taylor. Uh, ta Taylor's in Australia, as is Lauren Simple Aquariums, and it's Taylor time. So go. Tell us tell us how tomorrow's going to be. This is what Taylor does. What is going on? <laughs> There's go. no one here. All right. Dude, I got kids knocking on my freaking door. I, I, <laughs> They're like, what's, why, is, why, is he, why, is he, why is he got the lights up? What's he doing? Yeah. Taylor. Why is he always with lights? Wait. Mikey, Mike, Mike, you're also Australia? All right, we got three of them. So let's get back to free fluence and Carlos, you know. Yeah, dude, I know. I agree. That's, that's why I follow. That's why I listen. That's why when you tell me to do something, I go do it because I know you know what you're talking about. That's influencing. I don't disagree yep. with influencing. I disagree with um, two aspects, getting products and not talking about how you got them. 
because if you got them for free, you should be open about it. Yep. Two, there are people out there who are influencer aggregators, and I've mentioned this word before. So there are companies who will contract a person. This person will go find people who are willing to share positive information about the company that contracted this person. Those people may not be transparent about the work that they are doing, although they full well know what they're doing. That's the influencing, that, and uh, paid influencing that aren't transparent. Those are the two I don't dig. Do you get one of these? I'll give you one of those. All right. That's not cool. Yeah. The future is looking windy and hail, so get those battery backups ready. I'm sorry. What? A little battery something. something. I think... um, yeah, it was Devin. Devin posted his ultimate solar battery backup business first. Uh, that's good. Go watch that because it's a good start. It's a little light on ultimate, but it's absolutely a good start. If you are using lead acid batteries, capacity check them once a year because you need to know what your batteries are capable of. And uh, Devin set up a Dang. a cool... 12 volt backup doohickey with uh, the booster for his return pump, and that's good. So, do that if you want some. If you want to add a little ultimate to the ultimate, let's start talking about lithium iron phosphate batteries. But get back to free fluencing, please. Yo, can we can we back up? So, um, so there are you know there are some conglomerates that that find companies and people for influencing and things. Um, I even think that could be a good thing. Um, if people are transparent, so, you know, I don't know enough about that arena, right? Like I'm, I'm, I'm learning and I'm, I'm, I'm progressing, Mm -hmm. but it's not necessarily bad. And actually, if we want to back up a little bit, you know, I made the comment, there's no hashtags that are passive aggressive and et cetera. So what I have found, and I'm going to be talking about it. I'm not sure how I want to really talk about it, but um, I know I shared with you, Jim, that a um, a corporate guy from BRS is mocking me. Yep. And um, yeah, I'm out, not okay with that. You know, when you hire you you hold a high position in a company, you are in fact the leadership of that company. Yeah, agreed. So the f- fact that a director <clears throat> of BRS is mocking me. I question how his um, are his 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 intentions aligned with um, BRS's company culture, which says um, service customers above all else. I've paid over ten thousand dollars, Jim, in the last three years. Yep. I don't know if that's really servicing customers above all else, mocking me. Good natured and open minded. Nope, you fail that one. And humble, humbly confident. So they're humbly confident. It's pretty cool. It's about, it's about really being confident in your abilities, but being open to um, thinking about things differently. So anyways, that didn't sit well with me. Um, and in, in the corporate world, Jim, I'm not, I'm not some slep, you know. So, hey, bro, you're a director. You'd be reporting to me. So, like, piss off. You know what I mean? Like, that, that lights me up. That yep. pissed me off. Like, I'll go as far as saying, okay, thanks a lot, asshole. Um, But what's funny about it is I should look at it this way, I think. A director at BRS knows exactly what I'm talking about less than one day after I post it. Nope. Jim? Nope. That's some big shit, right? Um, It was a ballsy move on his part. I saw the post. Uh, I know of the person, and it wasn't cool. Some folk call that bullying. Some folk call that corporate bullying. I mean, if you're gonna, yep. I mean, if you're gonna hold that position in a company and you're gonna talk some schmack uh, uh, <laughs> about a consumer, what, yeah, do you, that, what do you expect to happen? That pays you, you part of your salary, and I, you know, I'm a good customer. I never. 
bitch about my products. I don't, you know, oh, I wanted this or whatever. But for me, um, my takeaway is like, so first of all, I'm in the probiotic industry. You know yep. that, right, Jim? Yep. Like, um, I am not allowed to mock or make fun of anyone in the industry. That is strictly forbidden. I'm not even allowed to really post political stuff on LinkedIn, which yeah. is fine. That's yeah. great. You know, so um, it's it's unprofessional <clears throat> and, you know, I'm moving on. Like, okay, that happened and I'm taking away, you know, my wife, she's a good barometer. She's like, Luca, that dude knew less than two days or 24 hours of when you posted it. It means that BRS is watching everything you do. Oh, absolutely. And what, is, what does that mean, Jim? If they're watching, why would they be watching if I was just some – nonchalant schmuck right um but i do think you that and i both know the, why they're watching yeah and it motivates me so i appreciate it because it pissed me off i'll be honest i put in a um extremely large order after that to double down on my stock so that i don't run out so i appreciate that motivation and it just keeps telling me that what i'm doing is right yeah. if you have people that are high up in a company mocking you that is a phenomenal thing so I'm over it. Um, I was going to do a video about it. I think I still might just um, ask the Bertram venture capitalists if that's what they embody and if that's the way they like their their team represented. Yep. Um, and I'm going to leave it at that. You know, I got the screenshot. I, I, I'm going to show it to them. Um, but I'm moving on. And, you know, there's going to be a day when I'm at some of the, those shows, whatever, the aquarium shows. Yep. And I have sales, hopefully, similar to what BRS does for lights. And that's where I'm going. And um, I like, I'm like Brady. I, wanna, I want someone to, to, to motivate me. So thank you. All the ones that make fun of me, you know, like Jim, they, they have team milk, and we use that now. Um, <laughs> I love my hashtag. Shit. I love my Chevy Malibu, bitches. Yeah. You know, I, I, I'm not stupid. I'm not going to forget. And when we get, so I want to talk about this is I think the freefluencers, if we join together and we get our own crew, we can play the same game. We can send out memos. We can talk about what we're going to start posting, how we're going to start doing it. And you know what? We have a lot more voices than they do. We can actually win out. So, um, you know, that's where I'm at. And Carlos's, uh, Carlos's comments is Carlos awesome. Carlos got it. Carlos I, got I, it. I hit you. I, you got it right, bro. So anyways, that's one thing I want to kick. I know I'm being scatterbrained. Um, but I would like everyone to start thinking about the free influencer. And if we get a group that's interested, we do start talking about what we're going to post about, or we coordinate. Um, let's say we find some more bullying activity and it's not just about me. Let's say someone starts mocking Carlos cause he is a true influencer, but he's not getting paid. Um, you know, like, like sucker or whatever we, we go, we all go on that post and we just run it with, yep. Hey, he, he represents the people. He, you're talking down to him. You know, and I think really at the end of the day, I think us leaders, true <laughs> leaders are here to mentor and inspire. And I think that's the way we take it. We take leadership first. We take the high road. But I want to get a stronger voice so that it's not just me and you doing Freefluencer. There's people picking this up. But how do we get this out there? I think more people than not are going to, it's going to resonate with them. And they're going to want to be part of that. I like Rob. Rob throws out a free squad. I like that. I like that too. Well done, Rob. Rob's smart. I, mean, I know. He should Rob... be my business manager. He just lives <laughs> close to me. And Rob hangs out here. I'm gonna have him come over to the come over to the driveway and have beers and then we'll stream from the driveway. He's probably here now. Who knows? He hangs out in Virginia quite a bit. That's awesome. So dude, uh actually I think the same person pinged me once. Gringo. Gringo pinged me on Instagram once. And it, it feels like a fake account, but I can't tell. And I'm not going to dig for it now. But he posted a, an interesting uh, comment. And, and I'm happy to discuss maybe the basis around that thing if, if you want to throw more comments into the chat. I'm certainly not. I'll debate. And I'm comfortable debating. And it's not going to be an argument. And it's not going to be a piss fest. So, uh, what do you ask? He says, uh, at least on social media people will not view me as independent and unbiased. Okay. Maybe. 
in some cases. Oh, you? Absolutely. In, yeah, I thought yeah. he's talking about himself. No, no, no. no. I, I may not be unbiased, and I may not be independent. Yes and no. Hmm. I'm comfortable with a yes and no answer. I think, I think pa- passion, I like talking about passion. Yeah. Um, I think when wrong things happen, your passion uh, ignites you just like me. Mm-hmm. And are we totally independent at that point? No. But Jim, your data, like people don't, I, I, if you're not a scientist, it's hard to like understand the nuances of testing, the nuances of data. Yep. Um, and, and, and as a peer to peer review of two scientists that do highly scientific work at work, I don't see any bias. I see someone testing lights and speaking the truth. And that refi uno blew my freaking, you know, I went crazy on that, Jim. Oh, I, I trust that. your data. I love that. I don't light. need to see one. I don't need to see it compared to a radion. I know the data and it, it, it's, it's a beast. So I, I don't know. I think your testing is inc- incredibly independent. I think your um, in d- dissections of stuff is really good. How, I don't know. There's no standard on how to like disassemble something. No. So I feel like you're onto something. Um, you know, Jake Adams has supported what you have said. Jake Adams is a free influencer, man. He, if you hear him, he is talking about why do these stores always push these auto top offs? You can get a float valve. Why are they doing this? Why aren't we using f- flight food more? Blah, blah, blah. Yep. He even made the statement. He was like, why don't companies pay more for research and development instead of influencers? Mm-hmm. So Jake said, this feels like a $600 light. It's, yep. it's not quality. He, it's okay for him to say it, but when you say it, you're biased. I don't think you are. I, I even gave him an extra 100 bucks. I went 699 <laughs> <laughs> and he ripped them he ripped them apart on the channels the four channels but then he also went back and when he put it over the tank he was like yeah this doesn't suck and that's what exactly. i'm saying about the light the light doesn't suck but the light is poorly made and the light is overpriced and the light is super hyped and the light's not selling shocker and i i I think the light's not selling. Did you watch the uh, Reef Dudes with Neptune? Yeah, I did. Absolutely. Bro, that was that was the most cringeworthy <laughs> thing I have seen in a long time. Whoa, 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 whoa. So here's my thought on it. I don't like to get in. I don't know why I talk about this light, but here's my take on it. You have someone that clearly compares his light to Ecotech, but yet doesn't compare the construction, the design to Ecotech. I sell lights, and you know multiple times I have said I have a lot of respect for Ecotech. Yep. The Radians, customer support, the yep. design, the quality. I mean, come on, let's get real. Those are awesome lights. There's money in those um, lights. And, and you know what? If you're the best in the industry, you can charge as much as you want because there's that customer that wants it. And I respect that. Mm-hmm. But he combined like this weird like anger at consumers and reviewers and then justifying everything by how much Ecotech charges. But he didn't, eat char- he didn't even compare an Ecotech, Ecotech G5 to his light. He said I don't it was, get it. He said he was going to. They didn't. Well, okay. He kind of has to at this point, I think. But so, so I guess I learned a lot from that that presentation. And um, I, one of my personal mentalities is I'm not going to get a bias towards lice. So you're hearing me talk about Ricky in a very positive manner. Uh, t 5 I will not bash him. Yep. Uh, I get the mercury. And, and Jim, I did my tank swap. And yep. I had to recycle... 32 or 40 bulbs even though i was recycling i'm like this is ridiculous i get your po-. it was very real jim when i had a bundle of lights this big and i was taking it to get reclaimed and i had to go high and low because no one sells t5s anymore so uh, but i'm not going to bash their light their bite their light kicks ass it's awesome yep it's a good spectrum um, so anyways, that's, that's where I'm at is, is, is on that. It's just, it doesn't measure up. The design is there. And he was taking shots at Chinese lights. 
And you know, I'm I'm open. Mine are made in China because I can't sell cheaper lights if I make them in America. <clears throat> Chinese lights. Uh, so I kind of got nervous after after seeing that, and I dive dove deep into like the specifics on my light, and I just double check stuff. It's made good. It's not. It's not shit because it's made in China. Yeah, uh, it's cheaper, and you know it takes a little bit, but it's not junk. So Will Prowse had a really good rant, and I don't know that it's still up on his YouTube. Uh, and this is absolutely an unpopular opinion. Um, I feel as if I have a little bit of clout in my, or at least I can justify me saying this. I'm 20 years, 16 days, U.S. Air Force retired. I did my time for Merca, right? I did it. Mm -hmm. Will Prowse's position is that the Chinese are trying harder, and I believe that. We are sitting here in our houses reveling in the fact that we're the United States, that we have these manufacturing arms of excellence, and I am. I think we spend too much time reveling in something that doesn't necessarily exist. The Chinese mm -hmm. are trying hard. They are educated. They are smart. They are people just like us, and they're going to kick our asses if we just sit here and revel in what we've done in the past, what, what the generations before us brought to the table. We're not necessarily doing the same thing that they did, Yep, and and we're we're going to lose, and we continue to lose, and dare I say, we've already lost that manufacturing power, because they're doing it better for us. Yeah, I mean, uh, high tech manufacturing like probiotics or pharmaceuticals, we we still I, absolutely we still have we're really good. Um, but I completely agree. I mean, look at um, don't want to get political, but Biden wants to give subsidies for union made electric American car companies. Why? Because they're not they're not relevant. Their products, a Chevy Bolt right now cannot be parked in a garage. I mean, it needs to be parked 50 foot away from any other car <laughs> yep. because it could spontaneously bust an hour. Yep. Um, but back to it, I saw a couple comments here. Um, all lights are made in China. You know, not it, all, not, not all. That's not true. Semi LEDs out in, in San Jose is is kicking <laughs> out those pucks, most likely for a refi. I don't want to put words in his mouth. Um, he has really good LEDs. But there's some high-end manufacturers, and I am in contact with high-end American manufacturers for my Quanta Elite, which you want to name something different, Jim, which is a better name. What was that name? It was the Quantum Leap. Quantum Leap, yes. So <laughs> um, did I say Quantum Leap? Quantum Leap. Yeah, so uh, there are good ones out there, and it is more expensive, but you're getting – you are getting um, – I will say that if you don't know how to manage quality on your own, you could get burned going to China. Um, mm -hmm. But when when they find when they find out that you're not effing around and you know what you're talking about, <clears throat> that's where I think you can get it. And you know, I'm seeing things like IP theft. Agreed. Not Agreed. Disagreeing. Um, and that's a concern but, for you. Um, so they've actually agreed to the exclusivity. So, All right, cool. I mean, you know, I'm going with, I'll be honest, I'm going with one of the most expensive LED manufacturers in China. I'm, they ain't cheap. Now these Quantas, these are a little bit cheaper, but the company that makes these, um, if you're driving a car around here, I bet you, you have their LEDs in your automobile. So I think nice. they know a couple things about LEDs too. They just happen to make hurricane proof lighting and i just took their chassis and we put it in reef lights yep and again they're going to do exclusive with me and i respect that so um that's where i'm at you know are, are american leds better than um chinese i got a news flash mm -hmm. i cannot i'm not allowed to say what brand but there are brands of american leds that are no longer manufactured in america i can say it do it Cree has sold their arm, their U.S. LED manufacturing arm, to a Chinese conglomerate. Yes, they have. They ain't made here no more, or they won't be soon. And that Chinese conglomerate might be making lights for 
maybe the quanta. I'm just making things up here, but maybe it's the same. <laughs> I don't know. I want to also mention another thing. Uh, I have. Let's I, stop talking about my lights. I don't want to talk about my lights anymore. Sorry. All right, I want, this more. is your show, I, dude. I walked. No, it's cool. I walked through Ecotech. I got a tour through Ecotech, and I watched them making their own lights. I watched them dropping their electronics that are made somewhere else, but who cares? But I watched the whole process of radions being made. That stuff can be made here. It can be made in-house. It doesn't necessarily have to be outsourced. And Ecotech is controlling their quality because it is absolutely in-house. Oh, by the way, and now they're owned by Bertram. And I've already mentioned this. I, a note fell off the back of a truck back on the 11th. Bertram has purchased Innovative Marine and Ecotech Marine. That's a, uh, you know... At this point, what's interesting for me, I'm gonna make a prediction. Neptune goes back to Neptuning, which is controllers. Ecotech takes on all the all the water movement and lighting yeah. and, and the return stuff. Yep. Um, because let's be honest, if you compare uh, the equivalents for both companies, there's no comparison. Um, I will say the Versa continuous dose. I know they got a couple of leaks in here and there, but that thing's a beast. I need to go pick one up. To... Lynn has one for me. I, I bought one. They're hard to her. find. Yeah, yeah, They're yeah. so hard to find. But I have one. I just need to go pick it up. Now, yeah. Innovative Marine, they make they make like aquariums, right? Yep. Yeah. So now look at you have a legit, complete, continuous product offer. Oh, total. Right. I don't know that they're going to get old man Jack's Brightwell, but it's totally possible that they can. And then there's Algae Barn out there, right? But, you know, they're slowly marching their way through the industry, collecting up some pretty decent, you know, businesses. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and again, I take the position that um, acquisitions aren't bad. Um, however, I, I, so I, sell companies, right, Jim? We build, I build companies up and we sell them. Um, hey, guys, go buy sweet potato chips because I'm joining that <laughs> here really soon. Um, uh, but uh, acquisitions um, are going to change things, and acquisitions are unpredictable. Companies can say, come in and say, we want best of both. We're going to honor your, your um, independence and things like that. And three months into it, they can pull the trigger and say, nope, we're, gonna, we're dropping the hammer, and here's how it's going to be. Um, they can also connect dots like, Hey, why are you guys buying this from here? We can group by that. Save you. Let's say, I'm going to say, I'm going to make this up. Radeon light. We can save you 50 bucks in components. Yep. We can cheapen it up by that 50 bucks, but actually we're going to get you a quote unquote $50 of performance out of that. That can happen. That can happen. The other, which happens more often is they cheapen it up and you get fifty dollars less, but you're paying fifty dollars more. Yeah. Um, however, hmm, I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. I think they're going to be leveraging purchasing, leveraging engineering. Um, a lot of small companies don't understand how to make stuff efficiently and cheap. And I'm not speaking for any of these companies. In general, um, small companies rise up because they're innovative, nimble intelligent uh they have new technology their business model is based on innovation and value and, and and uh new ideas it's not based on having someone talk about saving one tenth of a cent for each led if we do over 50 units per day yep. with a multiplier and if you get quality issues our huge lawyer team is going to hold you accountable to this much money now they have those options so for me, it's going to be interesting what happens. I have a weird feeling that Neptune will probably have someone different speaking. Um, I would guess that. Interesting. Because, um, uh, you know, you got to realize uh, venture capitalists are, are they, are they private equity or are they venture capitalists? They're VC. Person? Okay. So VCs. I think. Yeah. I think they are too. I looked at like a little bit. Um, <clears throat> I would guess that they're gonna they're gonna make sure that um, things go to script for all uh, people that are associated with the brand. Yep, agreed. And that that reef dudes that that was not to script. That was 
that's actually a train wreck because then they, they're going to buy this, that company that he's comparing them. I mean, if you think about it, it's a complete disaster. You're comparing yourself to Egotech and now the same company buys Egotech and, and it's like, Oh my gosh. Uh, so and they had all that. Of, I don't get it. They had all the time to develop. They had all the time in the world to develop that light. Uh, and, and then it comes out with a Viper Spectra Spectrum. Come on. It really it's did. Nice I'm not making that up. To your point. It, I know. It looks like the Viper Spectrum. It's very, very yeah. close. But like Jake says, it's pleasing to the eyes. I don't know if it's as effective for the corals. Yeah, it's good for people. It's not. Well, I, it is effective for corals, and it is made for people. Yeah. It, it's not fabulous for corals. So Bert raises an interesting point here, and I think it's all about control, but read his comment there. I've talked to a couple of farmers overdosing oversaturated calc. I, I can't figure out, as long as you're doing it at least the way I'm doing it, and I'm not going to say it's the right way, but it, if I'm doing it my way, I can't figure out how I would overdose my calc. Um, I don't see solid calcium buildups. I'm sure yeah. it's possible. It uh, is. If you're I'm... dosing sodium bicarbonate. So I'm finding a lot of people that are having issues with massive concrete like buildup. Yep. They are dosing the do it yourself two part with sodium bicarbonate. Um, and with, I, with honest, calc? I, yes, yes, okay. yes, yes. And I, I was talking to a gentleman that, um, his filter socks were actually concreting up. And I said, listen, you are doing something wrong. If you follow what me and Jim talk about, it works perfect. Um, to Rob's does, doesn't scale up at some point. Um, I got 800 gallons, which is a system. Most aquaculturists don't do over a thousand gallons on one system. They have a lot of different systems. Um, I'm finding that they're dosing. They're doing either weird things like there's no agitation or the sump is really small or they're just dripping it into the tank itself, or they're dosing something weird. And when I tell people, you want to basically transition from whatever elk you're using to calc slurry. So I'm actually thinking about selling my calcium reactor so I can't even go back. I sent you, um, a, right? I sent you a link today, a local guy who yeah. I've been to his house. I've seen his corals. I know what he's got going Holy on. Cow. He totally shut down his calcium reactor and he went full slurry. And he, he's yeah. seeing the same benefits I'm seeing to the point where I need to start thinking about, and I like your method, either uh, adjusting light cycle to compensate for high pH because my pH yes. does not drop below 8.3. Uh, and it's it may hit a low of 8.4 tonight. Oh, I got another Oof. thing to ask you about, but um, Oof, he's seeing the same pH. benefits, right? I'm trying to, I'm, I'm going to do this, right? It's going, my pH is going to do that. And I'm comfortable with it swinging. When the lights come on, photosynthesis hits and my pH starts yes. skyrocketing, is rocketing. It'll hit 8.65. Like it did today. That's, and it's not, it's not bad from a um, uh, precipitation standpoint. Yeah. It's not bad from a uh, uh, magnesium or calcium standpoint. I don't. I just don't know. I don't think anyone knows enough about um, good old coral. Is that too high? Is there yeah. actually a too high? Right. I don't know. But with my big system, I think I told you I was, I was going to reverse light cycle. Yep. And it basically stays between, I mean, there's a little trough that gets down to like 8.2, but then it's basically between 8.3 and 8.4 for 18 hours a day yep. or 20. Yep. And um, so I removed 14 gallons. I want to say that again, 14 gallons of Monopora from my system when I transferred my system. 14 gallons. And I have now increased my calc, uh, my elk uptake by 110% by doing this reverse light cycling. It's out of control. My calcification is going through the freaking roof. So you know what I'm doing, right? You're aware oh, of, the, you're aware of the, the project I got going on right now that's probably going to be a six-monther. Yes. So what I'm doing, if you don't know, is 
I am I have fixed slurry dose. I am not adjusting my dose. So I had a solid dose at 9 dKH. My tank was sitting at 9 dKH, and it just stayed right there. It would float around 8.8, eight, 9.2, whatever. The average was 9. And I introduced um, aminos. And the first one up was uh, Brightwell, Coral Aminos. I, wanted, I want to see a change. If I'm dosing something, I want to see a change, period. Uh, and then I started dosing. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. Day five or six hap- hit, and, and shit started happening. Um, my alkalinity, and my dose was the same. My alkalinity dropped from eight or from nine to it's sitting right now at 7.2. And oh I'm, my and, god. <laughs> and I'm not adjusting my dose. In the past, when I would see something like that, it was absolutely because I was dosing less two part or less calc. But I would see that in pH. Yep. But my pH has increased. So my alkalinity has dropped and my pH has increased. Just from that one dose. Now, not sponsored. Free fluencer. I don't know what the hell's going on, but I'm pretty interested <laughs> in seeing how this goes, and I'm going to do it for 30 days, and I'm going to stop, and I'm going to see what then my alkalinity does. Here's my That's question. Beautiful. Here's my question, right? So people in the past have talked about when you're dosing phosphates and nitrates that when you test your nitrates or your phosphates, they might, that may not be a representative number mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. the algae in your tank or the whatever the hell's going on in your tank is is buffering it's influencing it is it is whatevering to the th- whatever whatever sitting in your tank so when you test it's probably lower than what that true value is because i continued to dose calc am, am am i wrong to think that the alkalinity that i'm adding is still at the appropriate level it's just that the free alkalinity that's in the tank is less because the corals are taking it up I've been thinking about this um, with the phosphates, you have the ortho and then like the bound and stuff. And um, I do agree with that. The phosphates are, are tricky. What's really cool is if you have a super high phosphate tank and then you fix the phosphate issue, it'll take you a month to get the phosphates down. Alkalinity is a, is a true measurement of a, uh, of a, uh, a uh, inorganic chemistry of your tank, but I can't say that it doesn't bind to rocks. Because I think you remember back, Jim, when I started doing calc slurry, I was listening to that um, Chris guy from ACI. And he's like, your, your, your elk's going to explode for a while. Yep. And I was like, man, this dude is smoking some chemistry crack. <laughs> and, I, like, I like Chris too because he's passionate. Oh, I love the guy. Right? Yeah. And, but you know what? He is an observer. And I respect yeah. observers. I Highly respect observers. And guess what I had? I, I added my, my – I got my um, stoichiometric ratios, and I'm like, okay, here's how much calc I need. And it, it as I slowly weaned off calcium reactor and I put in the, the, the calc slurry, it was holding and it was holding. And then I think it was like six days in, my alk went up to like 10. Yep. It went freaking nuts. Well, and yeah, I yeah, yeah. way back. Chris mentioned that. He said that was going to happen, right? Yes. Yes, he called it. And it's, yep. it's scientific. It's, from a chemistry standpoint, I can't explain that. But the dude's got me listening. And, you know, there's such interactions with sand and live rock and detritus and um, all these things that we just don't know. So at this point, what you're, what you're observing, keep observing it. I would say yep. if your elk gets to 6.5, to you need to bump it up. Yep. Yep. Um, I'm trying not to. Right now, it's holding. Right, it's it's seven two to seven five, and I'm just gonna let it go because the Montes are, you know, dude. I hate so much explosive growth. What is, what the hell does that mean? My Montes are growing. I see a difference. I'm not yeah. weighing them. I'm not gonna say I have found the holy grail of dosage. I'm just saying I see different growth. I don't know. Yeah. And um, I, I'm going to throw a different theory about amino acids. 
Yeah. So this vacation, I started, I, I listened to Reef Dudes. He had Dr. Tim on. Yep. And I, I liked him. It was, it was like the power went out. So I got like 15 minutes of information from him. Mm-hmm. Um, he really, he really blew my mind. And I was like, duh, why didn't I think of that? It's so stupid. So uh, when you make a bacteria fermentation, you're putting in yeast extracts and sugars. And what are yeast extracts? Amino yep. acids. Yep. So my question to you, Jim and Brightwell, um, People probably just assume that since I use Brightwell as an example, I hate Brightwell. No, it's not really true. Um, very expensive products. Very uh, expensive they, products, right? I do insane, my own. Insane. Yep. insane. Yep. But, I mean, look, look, at, look at what you're experiencing. Yep. That is probably no coincidence. They make shit that works. <clears throat> but hear me on this. What happens if the aminos and why you see results with aminos isn't actually, let's say, 10% from tissue uptake? What happens to the rest is just because you're feeding good bacteria that right. are now what growing and now they're eating them. Because I am dosing Tim's eco balance. Because Carlos said, hey, dose eco balance. I agree. Totally possible. And I guess for me, does it matter if the corals are taken up or if it's growing bacteria that's then feeding your corals? Um, nope. And my thought, you know. I want to talk about this a little bit. I was to want to touch on with you uh, about um, coral feeding. Yep. So Jake Adams comments about why don't they stop paying influencers and do R and D. He was specifically talking about coral food. There's no studies, no real actual studies. You know, you can see this, Hey, we did this uh, with a double blind. Uh, what's that mean? Okay. That's not a study. Thanks. Yeah. Um, there's no actual data that these dried coral foods are doing anything for your tank. Um, you know, there's one that I know if I have low phosphate, they dump a bunch in it because there's tons of phosphates in it. And that's what I use it for. I actually use it for organic phosphate dosing. Um, but what happens if we could get away from aminos and we could get away from um, s- stuff that's dried, you know, powders, whatever. And go back to baby brine shrimp. Yep. And what happens if just carbon dosing, not for nutrient reduction, but carbon dosing for bacterial for bacteria. population? And what happens, Jim, if we take our skimmers offline for 12 hours a day, mm-hmm. and that's when we carbon dose, and that's when we introduce our baby brine shrimp, and then for 12 hours, we skim to make sure that nothing gets residual. What happens if we start doing that and we have this, we have an ebb and flow of bacterial populations in the tank, just yep. like the ocean. And we have an influx of zooplankton, aka baby brine shrimp, Yep. just like the ocean. What, what actually happens? You know I don't skim, right? I did not know that. I don't skim. Mike. My- the cap is off the tiny little skimmer that's in my tank and it has been off <laughs> for years and it just overflows. <laughs> I don't skim. Do you have a, a fuge, right? Yeah, but it's not working because at some point the tank changed and this was months ago and all huh. the chato died back. This was after, so after the evil, which was like December through Feb where yes. the acros died. And Mm -hmm. then there was three months of, like, everything sort of alive. So I'm just going to – and I eliminated a whole lot of things. Yes. Then the fuge died off. At some point in there, I started dosing EcoBalance, and I stayed with that. I pulled Microbacter 7. I don't do that anymore. It's just EcoBalance all the time. Uh, I want to get back to a question that Rob asked. So keep this in mind. Does bacteria consume alkalinity? Um, so I have a fuge. It's not fuging. It's not doing anything right now, but I haven't pulled it out of service. It's flowing water and the lights come on, but ain't nothing growing in there. Huh? I don't skim. You don't skim or, or fuge. That's, oh, wow. What are your phosphates and nitrates at? Uh, phosphates. Well, Well, I mean, I can look real quick. Yeah. Nitrates were five last time I looked. And because I keep thinking eco balance. Uh, can you ask Rob or answer Rob's question real quick while I'm looking? 
Which one is that? It was do bacteria consume, consume elk? 0.05 oh. and 4.2. So I'm at 4.2 nitrates and 0.05 phosphates. Damn, you got some nice numbers. Um, uh, bacteria <laughs> will consume a minuscule amount of elk. Um, but when the coral eat it, so to speak, that calcium and elk would then go into the coral skeleton and reduce the amount of calcium and elk that the coral need to uptake. So it should be a net neutral situation. Unless you're skimming really, really hard, it would be very insignificant though. Um, for, for a 20,000 liter fermentation, we're adding two to three kilograms of calcium for the uptake for, I mean, 1800 kilograms of bacteria. So if you scale that out, it's using um, maybe a milligram a day or something like that. Carbon dosing feeds one type of bacteria. Do you agree with that? No. And nope. what what what, what form mm -hmm. of carbon are we discussing? So actually, I hate that they call it carbon dosing. Um, I would like to call it free carbohydrates because mm -hmm. that's what it is. Um, some, some things we can't consume. We can't consume vinegar. I don't think gives us caloric intake. It might, I'm not really sure, but like vodka. All right. So if you drink vodka, yeah, you get drunk. Um, however, your liver utilizes vodka cause it's a carbohydrate source. Alcohols are seven calories per gram. So, um, we can grow a wide range of lactobacillus bacteria. And if anyone knows what that means, they're milk loving bacteria. They grow in milk. And since everyone's convinced that vegan and gluten free is really good for you, um, which in a fermentation has no effect on the final product, you can't even test for it. Um, I just love perception of consumers, but we grow, Jim, we grow all of our lactobacillus bacteria in a vegan, gluten free, kosher, halal compliant media mix, of which it represents milk 0%. And that stuff grows like nuts. So would it favor some bacteria? It, it could. Um, would it exclude some bacteria? Possibly. However, my experience has been three generational drifts from the mother culture and you can get strict anaerobes living in, in uh, aerobic conditions. You can get strict, um, let's say, um, they can't, they can't tolerate, um, amino acids, A, B, and C in about four generations, you can turn them into amino A, B, and C lovers. So, uh, you give your, your tank 12 to 24 days. And I would say that everything would probably figure out how to eat it. Um, however, I do think it's a valid point and I've always pondered what happens if you had different types of carbohydrates being dosed into the tank to feed the bacteria like citric. I, I don't know if citric acid will work. I'd have to look into that, but it's, you know, so vinegar, what, what are the th three things you can use vinegar? You can use, um, well, there's people vodka. talk about sugar water, but I'm, I, I don't, I don't do that. Uh, vinegar, vodka. What about, um, uh, crap. What's the stuff where you where you're you're in biology and your dead snake is floating in that juice? What's that? Formaldehyde. Yeah, formaldehyde is oh. that's what Red Sea's using. Oh, that's no pox. Jeez, that's a. I don't think the lawyers know that. <laughs> <laughs> because the other name for mal for formaldehyde is what? I have no idea. Oh, I'm gonna look it up while you're talking. Because I know it to be something else. Yeah. yeah, I'm actually thinking about it too. Yeah, formaldehyde is, you know, and and so do you know like Benefets, that uh, coral food? Yes, it's made up of yeast. It's made up of yeast extracts. I Again. keep hearing awesome things about it. And think about it. What do fermenters use to grow bacteria? Yeast extracts. Yes. Is so you... Benefets actually a prebiotic? So it comes back to the bi bacteria. Always does. It always comes I back swear, to the bacteria. Man. I'm starting to think I'm I'm starting to think. I'm having this revelation. I told Sky High Reefer I wanna I wanna talk about the how how 
coral food, we need to redefine how we think about this. And actually these inputs we're putting into our tank, I think are actually prebiotics or AKA media yep. for the bacteria to grow, for the coral to eat. That's where I'm at right now, my friend. That's why I was, I was like, Jimmy, we got to talk, man, because I just got to spew some of the shit I've been thinking about for days. <laughs> Mikey Mike Mike says, high fructose corn syrup. No, sir. <laughs> you could do it. I, you know what I should I do? I mean, you do it, and you let us know. I should do it. My coral are growing really big and fast, and they have breasts. <laughs> <laughs> that's not cool. I don't think that's okay. Uh. See, this is a Bert right there. Benefits of the game changer, dude. I think yeah, it does feed the corals, and I think it feeds the it feeds the freaking um, coral or the bacteria. I think feeling like the dumbest person in the room, Taylor. You are absolutely oh. not the dumbest person in the room. We're just we're just yammering. Um. Oh, Carlos is using uh, dry yeast. Yeah, that's interesting. See? That is interesting. Maybe it's not formaldehyde. I'm going to go look some more. What's the... Uh... I wonder if it's the same stuff they use for flourish for what's in the, plants. What's, what's in the... Oh, that's interesting. I don't know. Don't listen to me. I'm going to figure it out. It's, yeah, CH, CH2O. It's also known as something else. CH2. I, I tell you what, give me give me some time away from my barking dog that I'm ready to punt through the uprights. And um, I'll go look it up, uh, what they're using, and think about it for a while. What's the other? Uh, it's not the stuff to see. I'm brain dead right now. Too much time in the sun, too much foo-foo. What you drinking on? Oh, I'm drinking Trulies, bro. I'm feeling sassy. Dude, I'm going to I'm gonna get a Truly right now because I'm a sassy boy. I, <laughs> I like those lemonades. They make me feel special. Am I an alcoholic if I can open the can with one hand? I mean... Does that make me an alcoholic? No, they're small cans for small hands. Yeah. Look at how... Hey, I'm like Trump. Look how big my hands are. <laughs> yeah, look. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is not an ad. I'm free-fluencing Truly. I don't think Truly would really want us to represent their brands. Hey, look nope. at these nerds. It's Friday. It's Friday night, and they're or it's Saturday. Saturday it's, night, and it's Saturday. And they're talking about coral food and yeast. Oh yeah, are you thinking about methanol? Oh, yeah, I'm totally oh. thinking about methanol. That's exactly what I'm thinking about. Thank you, ATF. That that would work. Hold on, let me look up methanol. Oh, Carlos what? is talking about Greg yeah. Carroll. That's what he uses. What does he use? The the yeast? CH3OH. Yeah, methanol. My bad. Yep. I take back formaldehyde. Don't drink it. Don't dose it. Oof. Don't do what I do. Methanol. Thank you. Don't drink no pox. Well, yeah, you don't want to drink methanol. You would put it in your gas. A Filipino reefer, you are just a frat boy. <laughs> <laughs> He, he's sassy. He's can been I, sassy. I, I like to talk about my college days. I'm really glad I didn't go to jail. I was at a party where I saw a person who's inebriated drink tiki torch fluid. Oh, that's... it was like poured into a glass. I, I called. I called up waste control and uh, basically saved his life because they did pump it and he was fine. But dude was chugging it. <laughs> I'm like, well, yo, that dude's chugging. Torch what fuel. What up, Lynn? Lynn's into his owl. See, Rob yeah. says that's why he dates his girlfriend. Small hands. <sighs> I mean, you got to play with the cards you're dealt, brother. That's yeah. how it is. Yes. <sighs> what did Bert say? Why yes, is Bert he right? recommended. Bert right. Bacteria is the future and everything. So here's what I need out of bacteria. We keep talking about bacteria. If you call the inappropriate reefer, if you call all hail Moki, if you call him and say... Tell me about Telegram talking about bacteria. That goes back because I was like, something's up. And I and I and it sucks for me because I couldn't figure out what was happening. But I was carbon dosing, not formaldehyde, no pox. And I was seeing things happen, daily growth, 
that was just thrilling me. Something was happening in there. The bacteria were super happy, and I lost it. I, of course, lost control of it because I'm stupid, but whatever. But I was like, here's what I need from bacteria testing, monitoring, understanding, all of that. Here's what I need. I need a recipe. So here's what I'm doing. Just like ICP, that's what I need. Here's what I'm doing. Here's how to fix it, or here's how to make it better. Because yes. right now we have yes. the opportunity to test bacteria, and like here's the, here's the whatever the hell the flora fauna wrong words, but whatever. Here's what's yep. in your tank, right? Here's the biodiversity yep. in your tank. Now, what the hell do you do with that information? Is there a is there a bacteria for dummies guide? Because that's what I need. Well, and I agree. It's like. Um, when you get test results that you can't action on, I don't consider it it useful data. I mean, right. okay, that's what I got. Is this good? Is this bad? Should I put some yogurt in my tank? Like, what, what do I do? You know, and, and so um, I think it's an interesting proposal. I think they're going to get there, and I think it's going to be fast. And I think Bert is dead on. I think uh, we all know that these these idiotic, oh, hey, I woke up and I had STN. Man, it's not because your alk went down 0.1. It's not alk. Got, and your temperature got to 76.8. Come on. It's you're, not if you're dove in a, If you were dove in a reef, it can change six degrees in an yep. hour when the, when, it, when the things change. You know, it's like, no, we're missing something. And I think you're right. I think it's the, it's the, it's the quote unquote gut health of your reef tank. And I think yeah. tanks that don't have sand and don't have gross detritus probably limits the growth of bacteria and and that normally makes them more successful because at least they're limiting the bad stuff i don't know the alkalinity swing is because something went bad with bacteria the ph swing is because something went bad with bacteria yes i mean your ph is going to drop when stuff starts dying right and your alkalinity is going to go up so if you blame your alkalinity spike for your STN, your RTN, that ain't it. Nope. It, when you dose Dr. Tim's, your pH goes down for a little bit, right? I dose Dr. Tim's, oh, I'll have to look, two or three times a day. So I just break it up. Yeah, Greg was talking about that, actually. Because I tested, uh, I tested what I test. I tested Microbacter 7, and I tested Tim's and showed that the pH was super, super low. It was... It's acidic, but I break yeah. that dose up so it doesn't really. I should be dosing it right around two thirty when my freaking pH is too high. That's what I should be doing. Yeah, you know, I wonder if they have some lactobacillus bacteria actually in there because they're the easiest to get. Because lactobacillus bacteria, when they metabolize, they make um, lactic acid, which is going to drive your pH down. Interesting. DC, you haven't you haven't been told lies. It's just I I don't think we know, right? Hi Warren. Yeah. Warren's cool. Um I I I think it we continue to learn and we just don't know what the hell we're talking about for the most part, especially Agreed. when it comes to biodiversity in the tank. Can can I just mirror this? And this is where I think everyone's going to probably be like, yeah, I guess this is freaking ridiculous. So you go and you get some hydroponic uh, life support system, right? You got your reservoir, you got your drip trays, um, you got your, your nutrients and, and your pH probes and you, you know, you got your lights and you got your tomatoes and shit. Do you to hear them like tomatoes? Go yeah. ahead. Do you ever hear anyone? Actually, I am talking about true vegetables because weed <laughs> growing is trickier. <laughs> Do you ever hear it saying, oh, bro, just woke up. All my tomatoes are fucking dead, you know. <laughs> STN, fuck it. <laughs> no, do you? And I know, I know, corals are. I mean, corals are animals. But it's the same as, oh man, went to bed and the hamsters are super chill, all fucking dead. Uh, pff, STN. Test your no. hamster pH. Yeah, dude. Like we don't know what the hell we're doing, and it, what sucks is like, I think. The industry doesn't give a shit enough. It's weird. I don't. So I'll challenge that. I think the, indu do. the industry should. is focused on money because that's what the industry does. That's why it's called industry and not hobbyists. Okay. I think we just don't know, right? 
I mean, yeah. I've been reefing for eight plus years, probably closer to nine. I've been running yes. calc six plus years. Oh, gee, baby. So, uh, but remember, we we went through the we don't know what the hell we're talking about. Now we're going to talk ultra no, ultra low nutrients because that was the jam. And then we're like, wait, that's bad. So don't do that shit anymore. And then we go through the don't chase pH. Then we go through the, I mean, within that realm is don't chase numbers, which is just stupid. Sorry. I think that's dumb. I think you should, yep. I think you should nail your targets. And if that's called chasing numbers, so be it. But I, and then, yes. and then we get to the point where I think maybe it was Meckley. Chris is talking about pH. So mm-hmm. Chris starts raising that pH conversation. And I was like, Yeah. And you're uh, like, and you're like, sense. yeah. And then and I'm you also start. Like, Go ahead. Bro's going to overdose the shit out of potassium in his tank. That's going to be a disaster. <laughs> right. Exactly. God. That's true. And I was like, why not? Uh, I mean, I keep dosing calc. And I'm like, I like my calc. I wish my calc offered more. And then you're all bro slurry. I was like, what? Yeah. Let's do that. <laughs> He's like, and you're like, I've been doing it. I'm like. I'm going to do that now, too. Is that okay? Me and you were the, we were the first two. Um, I met a dude on Reef to Reef that um, did it 13 years ago. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, don't listen to these clowns. It works. But he goes, people, you have to tell them how to do it because if you deviate, it will not work. That's why I put that. I'm not, gonna, I'm not shamelessly plugging my Instagram. But on my Instagram, I have a video. I'm like, if you do this exactly, it will work. But if you decide to go in a thicker line, you decide – not have agitation you decide to dose at one mil per minute no it's gonna clog it's gonna do this not gonna work and i guess jim what i'm struggling with is maybe when these lights get launched do i actually just make them that have perfect mixing the exact lines i don't even sell you the jable i'm gonna tell you the jable to buy i'm just gonna send you a (laughs) bucket of shit that when you put it together it'll work I'm thinking about it. I'm gonna, and, and how cheap can I make these for? Oh, yeah. That's exciting. Yep. Agreed. I don't know. That's just me. I'm a pH chasing mofo. And how oh, come I'm it's a not. PH how, come it's, how come it's not mofu? P. How do you do P? P. Think about H, that. Why is, it, why is it called mofo? Why isn't it called mo, mofu? Because it's, mofo is better. I, I mean, only because that's how we started. Maybe, oh, maybe well, we yeah. missed it. We did miss it. We missed was, a lot of things. I was challenged. I, mean, we're, we're I was challenged about, by that once. Coral. I had no answer. Why did I ever start doing coral? I should have just done something like grow weed. I'd be rich. God. People look at me. They're like, wait, you're doing what? I had the conversation today at Cross Country or Cross Crunchy. Oh, Rob's trying to make a manifold. It looks, it's a super legit idea. So, um, I think there's more ways to do everything. I think Rob's got a kick-ass idea. Um, oh, so, so Jim, uh, I want to talk to you about this, dude. We need to encourage other thought leaders to start putting their shit out there. Don't be scared. But I want to talk about the bullying, okay? Oh, you now might get videos made about you. And yeah. They're smart. They don't name me. So that's cool. That's smart. I know. You might you're, get videos made about you. And I think both of us, uh, you know, like you said, um, we have our own different ways. And um, in general, I'm pretty good friends with a lot of influencers. And, you know, I'm like, bro, I, let's just be positive, you know. But you can't, you can't make fun of someone and then, then say, why isn't everyone positive in, in this industry? That's bullshit. That's like, I kicked you in the face. Why didn't you kiss me? Oh, because my face <laughs> is bleeding. <laughs> Don't make fun of people. Rule number one. I'm sorry. Rule yes. number two, because Bert just offered the first, first rule of PH Club. What was that? He says <laughs> the first rule of PH Club and then just left it. He dropped it because we all oh, know dude. the rest. So, so I think people are scared to put stuff out there because – you're going to have corporate people making fun of you for just making a term freefluencer. Or just people should know, and you've already talked about that, and a bunch of people jumped on after the fact, you really should know that there is a, a, a BRS corporate dude who made fun of Luca um, for freefluencer, which is yep. bull, it's bullshit. Mm-hmm. What I find interesting, 
about the whole thing is I don't understand if, if you're truly embracing BRS, they were a small startup company too. They were. So it's like, okay. And then I think he has his own failed company between Brightwell and, and getting on BRS. Several. Which is fucking ironic. And it pisses me off. You, oh, what an ass. <laughs> so anyways, it's like maybe you're hating on me because you failed and you want me to fail too. And I'm not going to fail and I'm, I'm not going to do that. But so, so back to this free influencer thing and, and how do we get more thought leaders? I am a personal request from everyone that's watching. Start publishing stuff. Start tagging Jim and I. I want to say it's more than Jim and I. Who can we get yes. on the team? Everybody. We start tagging everyone and we start sharing this shit. We spread the word. Tim's in here. Just Tim, like they do. And Tim may not want to be associated, but Tim's in here. SolarSys14, absolutely. He's one of them. I know he's one of them. And he's coming. Y'all going to hear about it soon. I see Reef Nerd in. I mean, that, that's right there. That, that's, some, that's some intelligence right there. I, I would, you I got would, Bert. Yep. You know, you got all these people. Carlos. Carlos. Our guys in Wisconsin. They're, they're super. Uh, my, my buddy, he's doing Fido and stuff, and he's yep. cracking that code. And I think, so I, how, do I we, think, how do we get it more out there? Well, I want I Filipino know. Reefer to just, to just be our swear engine. All, all he oh, does, yeah. he's a sasshole all day. He, he is. He, he, <laughs> I want his his title on his business card is is sasshole. <laughs> is that cool? I'll 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 buy your fucking cards for you. <laughs> <laughs> because he's sassy, I like it. But anyways, I I'm gonna keep coming back to y'all. Just need to get. Just start putting good stuff out there and tag us. We'll support you. I mean, Jim's got almost 6,000. I got 1,000. There's people that got a couple thousand here. If we start reaching out, yo, we can grow our following. We can get the voice. It's a big deal. <laughs> it's a big deal. People are laughing at Sasshole. Give that man a truly hell yay. <laughs> <laughs> They're small cans for small hands. Yeah. Dainty. I need questions. So anyways, Anybody got good. questions? Yeah. Did we? It went like this. I sent Luca a text. He's like, hey, we could maybe talk about this. Puppies. We talked about everything. This, this puppy loves amino acids. Hold on. I got to move this screen out of the way so I can see this dog. Oh, 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 oh dear weird. God. Oh. Yeah, it's weird. Oh, that's a little something <laughs> special. <laughs> I, always say, I always ask my, my wife. She's got two dogs, and the last two dogs we had. I'm like, why are they so weird with licking? It's just so weird. I can't deal with it. Warren, oh. see, Warren's like, I'm all for this movement, and I'm all, I'm all for me, I'm all for me some DC Reaver, um, a gentleman, absolutely a gentleman. And a beautiful system owner with some mad plumbing skills with a Z for sure. Yeah. I I think it'd be cool, Jim, if paid influencers started promoting us. I think, you know, I think we promote a lot of influencers that are solid and legit. And I'm waiting for them to wade into the waters. It's like we are helping hobbyists. I don't understand why you wouldn't want to spread that. I mean, I, I know it's simplistic, but I really do believe that there are some really solid influencers that are going to start doing that. Yep. And I invite them to do that. And because we started this off by we like influencers. Shit, we're influencers. And there's different influencers. And there's nothing's bad. I mean, Jim, we talked about this at, at nauseum. Is an influencer is a new commercial. There's, oh, I was absolutely. never mad at people that made commercials because yep. that's their job. I respect if it's your job. And but we got to make this inclusive and, and lovey dovey. Um, inclusive, and I think I think Nim, Lynn is helping me out with the comments. But inclusive, and thank you. Uh, inclusive and transparent. I yep. have received free shit, and I will always be transparent about my free shit. And I'll always give you a review that I feel is fair, free or not. You know what I get free, Jim? Chinese beauty product. That's <laughs> they hot. They send them to me. Yeah, that's hot. Know, like two teas. 
I don't do that shit. It's like, you know, it's all this pressure. And I Is this why you look so sassy? Oh, I'm sassy, boy. <laughs> yeah. No, I got no hyaluronic acid on me right now, but I got some. <laughs> hey, Jake, Jake mentioned uh, what kind of local companies might carry Mississippi Lime. So you're looking for Mississippi Lime, Man, Vitacal. It's, it's Vitacal H, right? And if yes. you're in the U.S., Amazon will ship that to you for free for $110. You can also go um, Northwest Concentrates, a small organic co-op out of Washington State, and I can get the same bag for 83 buckaroos delivered to Wisconsin. Is that coming in freight? you got to buy multiple, or is that... No, it's... Um, actually, I'm going to buy freight. I'm going to buy, like, four of them, and okay. the shipping's going to be, like, marginally more expensive. It's awesome. And that's why I encourage, if you guys have, like clubs buy four four fifty pound bags get the freight charges now you're talking really th that 50 pound bag is 20 bucks if you live in washington you could go pick it up for 20 dollars for 50 pounds and you don't need two part and you don't need a calcium reactor and you can just yeah. dose calc for cheap Man. i have 5.5 years worth of calc in my house at my current dose rate Mike and Mike Mike had questions and I and I think I probably blew right past them way too yeah. far and I hope he my Australian brother I hope he hits me up on Instagram so we can we can wrap around that later. Jake just said something and he's like, "Yo, I live where Mississippi Lime is." Man, Jake, I called Mississippi Lime and it was like can you stop talking to me? If you're not buying a barge load, we don't care. We love you, but we don't care. And so they referred me to these distributors, Bertram or whatever. Not Bertram. <laughs> Not uh, Bertram. God damn it. <laughs> uh, Brenham. Uh, uh, Brenny, Brenham's ke ke Chemicals or whatever. They are going to sell it to me for $180 a bag. I'm like, dude, I'm in industry. I know, what you char I know what you get these for. That's bullshit. And then I found Northwest Concentrates, this organic co-op, and they're, they're passing on the love. And they're a small company. The dude is super cool. He wants to hook it up. So go support them. Hey, uh, first, the Australian peeps in the audience, I am absolutely down for jumping on and having a conversation because I just want to sit there and listen to y'all just like read from the dictionary. I really don't care what you say. I'll listen to you. But if you just read from the dictionary, I'll just sit there like this because that accent is kicks ass. Kicks ass. Uh, hey, so that was weird. Jake... What did he say? No, uh, Sebastian. Sebastian asked where in Washington you're getting that stuff. Yeah, Northwest in, uh, Concentrates. There it is. Yeah. yeah. Yep, Northwest Concentrates. Save me from my love of the Australian accent. It takes me back to the Road Warrior days. You know what I'm saying? I don't. Before I don't. that guy went weird. I live a sheltered life. Mm. You haven't watched the Road Warrior? No, I should Mel, Mel Gibson? Dude, I don't know. I get uh, lost. I watched like five I watched five movies a year. Mad Max was odd and the and the oh. and the voiceover was weird. So don't roll there. I would just jump in. I mean, if you want the background Mad story, go go road go Mad Max. I I've seen that one. Is that like the eighties like that's the first like that's the first one. But then go to the okay. road road warrior was I think the first good one. Once we got the Thunderdome, I'm out. I'm I'm not down for Thunderdome. I have no interest in that. Oh shit! I'm just going through all these questions. There's a lot of stuff we didn't answer. Um, uh, warranty for the cheap lights is a year, which is the same as expensive three, lights. And for three three years, mother truckers. For what? This refi is refi is three year warranty. Oh, they're they're crushing it for this guy. We're doing a year, but for the pros, we're doing two. And refi has three, like a car warranty. I, I, you know what? Honestly, Jim, years. I'm going, when I build my new house, I'm putting a big, big grow system in, in the basement. Good. I'm going to light up a four by six foot area with refis. I'm going to promote that man's lights. I don't know why. But I owe it to do it because he's such a cool guy and he's making such a kick-ass product. See so, this light? That's where I'm at. Uh, oh, God, is that sexy. This is Lynn Reef Nerd's light. She bought this. Oh. Dude was selling it. And I was like, I think I know somebody. 
Lynn, this is your light. Lynn, do you like it? She hasn't seen it. It's been at my house. Oh, she's going to use it after <laughs> after you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Lynn's a light hoarder. That's cool. Yeah, I think so. Three years. Yeah, try to get that from Neptune and Ecotech. See, now, I think Ecotech, while they have a warranty... They could do it. I think if you're a good person and you got some of their products... I think they have like a ten year warranty, dude. They have a they have so if it if it's old and it's crap and it goes, they'll give you money off a new one. They'll give you yeah, significant money off a new one. I respect the shit again, I have tons of res- I'm taking notes from them on how they do their customers. That's they got they got <laughs> mad props from me. Taylor's talking up Lauren and her pronunciation of words on simple aquariums. Yeah. Yeah. Fruity pebbles. Oh wait, is there is there a Fruity Pebbles episode that I missed? Hey, you're going. Oh, hey, uh, Simple Aquariums is going live, eight thirty a.m. Eastern time tomorrow morning, which is like eight thirty p.m. down under time. Do we have any more questions, my guy? I don't know. We uh we blew poo- blew right past an hour and a half. Sasshole Sasshole's leaving? Who's Sasshole? Oh, Filipino Reefer is leaving. Later. That's too oh. He so Taylor is Taylor time. Taylor offers us tomorrow. Actually any of our our, our uh, Australian friends can help us with tomorrow. So I'll extend that invitation. So Mike and Mike, Mike, Lauren, Simple Aquariums and Taylor can all offer Taylor time. Filipino Reefer is the resident sasshole. Period. We love him. I actually really like his comments. <laughs> They're quite sassy. Lynn's not going to put it, up Lynn's not going to put up with anything. And I would argue that Lynn absolutely deserves to be on somebody's list of amazing women reefers because she doesn't put up with anybody shit. And she's smart as hell. You know, you know what's interesting is uh, Lynn reached out to me and asked me some questions about my lights, and that you learn so much from smart people. Yep, like totally awesome. It's like just so cool. Whatever. Anyways, people that push us, I think if we push each other and ask those hard questions. I think that's a that's a a big positive for the hobby. I think what's weird is people look negatively on on. You, Jim, and, and also me partially, mm-hmm. but I'm not that big yet because we push stuff and we, we question stuff. It's like, no, it's it's good to have diverse thought and questions. And as long as it's not personally a personal attack on someone's no hair, eyebr- eyebr- eyebrows, maybe, you know, make make fun of my eyebrows, team eyebrow. You're such a um, unibrow. Dude, I, I've been plucking this since 12, man. I had a Guido stash back in the day. <laughs> and I'm I don't think you so could say, say that. that. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm full Guido, you know. I'm I I bleed it, but um, you know, I think that's what poor man's reef wants to hear more about the quantum brothers. Yep. Uh, but and Jake but, Sanchez you know, mentioned think... a calc tutorial, so you know what that keeps coming yeah. up. So we got to figure out every. I mean, I've talked to it a couple times. Uh, I don't know you or me or both of us just needs to put out a comprehensive. Here's how you do calc from saturated yeah, on up. I thought I did that, but I didn't. You yeah, know, it's like Lucas. I thought I did Lucas, But it's not because we're too deep in it. So we gotta we gotta really step back and and talk about it. But um, you know, we were talking about tutorial noobs. I agree. Um, and again, what would be cool is if we could have someone that's doing calc that isn't us to make a tutorial, we'll share the shit out of that. Yep. And that that's the key is when someone that learned it can teach it. I mean, Jim and I, we're, we're too deep into this calc thing. I mean, remember when everyone thought we were crazy? Like we we're going to, we we're going to kill children and, and the mean, world's going to come to, I mean, we are. Oh my God. We're not crazy. We're Rob's right. So, Hey, Rob, see Rob, Rob created this, Cal- oh, that calculator, is so... which is badass. And then, yeah, when I talk about smart people, that's who I refer to. For that me, guy. for me to, for me to 
prove Rob's calculator, I got to stop dosing for a day, which I'm not sure I'm going to do. So I might, <laughs> I might just stop dosing for like six hours just to see what happens. But Rob That's has legit. a super cool calculator that I, where did I put that? I put that on OneDrive or something and shared it. But I think Rob's going to build a web version of the same, which allows you to select your concentration. I'm running 4%, which allows you to select your concentration of calc. <laughs> and then... Do you read, do you read Lynn's comments? What did Lynn say? <laughs> My veins. <laughs> Lobotomous dream. You got some... <laughs> do you have some swoltness going on? I got I got low body fat man with my veins bulged, dude. <laughs> uh, Lynn, I got a good story to tell you. Sorry, I get distracted. Um, I got the flu shot a couple years ago, and the woman stuck it in, but she was like aggressive, so I tensed up, and she pulled out, and my muscle shot the flu vaccine back in her face. <laughs> oh, that's how tight like a tiger you are. Oh, that was good shit. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. Too many of these. Tr- Hashtag truly, do you guys like these? I get them at full price, but this house has been paid for. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I really like the lemonades. They're addictive. I can't they, drink they them because then I drink too many. They speak to me. They're candy. They are candy. They are candy. For small hands. Some people make smart people smarter. You need us. Dude, Phil Peel's back. Yes, the sass he never. Back. He never left, dude. He never left. He's he teased you. Don't tease me like that. Um, so let's let's go back and answer some questiones. Uh, so can I pick up my – yes. Yeah, you can come over. Lynn and Jim, pick them up there. Check email. Lynn, give it a test. Oh, cool. Chris, did you send me – you sent me something to print? That's cool. Hopefully. Dude. I, I, need, to I, share think, a, I, I think, need to share a screen real quick. I think – I think – how do you say it? K Clevin? Ooh, Chris Cleveland. No, yeah, so no, it's Clevin. It's Clevin. Let's just say Chris. Chris, he's like way, way into like the design and stuff. That's a that's big for us DIY DIYers and stuff. Chris, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Did you see that? Can you see what I'm doing? You can probably see what I'm doing. That sucks. I wanted to share the stupid audio configuration that I needed to create in order to capture all of the stupidness. Whoa. Watch this. That's the business I got going on right now to be able to listen to you and capture what you're doing in FaceTime and control your audio. You're smart, dude. No, I just got lucky. No, you're, you're smart. <laughs> Holy cow. You know what I did is I was chugging beers, ran home, and slapped up my huge light you can see behind me, and um, that's it. That's I remember I when it was daytime out. Yeah. Well, see, he says, yeah, Chris time. says 11. So, yeah, uh, so for those of you who don't know, Chris was the originator of the, um, I'm not going to say the name, the nozzle that creates a Venturi. And now, that, now he's designing more stuff because he's a wizard. That is random at times. Which part? Is that the nozzle? Uh, the nozzle it, that it, somewhat it's, is it's, random? It's, it's, uh, it's, it's turbulent. Oh, turbulent. That's a good name. That's a good word. It looks like this. Turbulent. It is turbulent. Yep. It yep. causes turbulence, both on the interwebs and in your tank. And now he just, he, I mean, he's, he's super good at 3D design, and I suck at it. All I do is print. I'm dumb. I print. Bert's going to set up. Cut. Baby, continuous baby Brian Slurry. That's dope. What's he going to yes do? Yes to the continuous six Continuous baby six Brian Slurry. Line. I like that. That's That's sassy. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be sick, dude. Found another light that should be tested. Oh, Jake. Oh, I got to send. Oh, dude, I suck. My bad. I haven't sent your light back. It's sitting right behind me. You could probably, if you looked hard enough, you could see the wrapping. Aren't, aren't the Op- acro optics like, like acro optics? thousands? How much is an acro optics? Dude, they're ridiculous. Don't say random flow generator. Gosh. Could you give me you a can't say that. Don't say Naughty. it. What if you Are you going to get a spanking for that? Are you going to get a spanking for that? <laughs> Actually, Jake talked about it. Jake's like, why the hell are you doing this? 
He talked about it. He was he got all sassy one day on his stream. He's like, "This is dumb. Don't do this." I don't think he was talking about Chris and Chris's effort, but he was like, "Just do one of the pinch in the middle figure eight looking nozzles." And he was he was frosty that day. You know, um, to talk about this, I don't want to detract from those three D printed nozzles because they're sick, and what. Clevin's doing is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, I I I got a really nice like uh, heat gun, and I started doing the Jake Adams Clover. Oh yeah, dude. There's then I just started taking a piece of wood and smashing and making a flat one. They they work good. You can angle them. You can bend the pipe a little bit. I mean, hey Chris, was, uh, hey Chris, fun. you want to give us different nozzles? Because he will. Because he's good at it. He does that in his sleep. Like he wakes up and has coffee and poof. 3D design stuff falls out. Oh yeah. yeah. I owe him. I owe him a light. Gosh. He... What else do we want to talk about, though? Let's let's think about. All right. So we agree that influencers are cool. Yeah, I'm cool with it. And there's different ways to do it, and they're all okay as long as you're being honest and and forthcoming. We another, talked about another thing I'm going to share. Not only yeah. will I share what I get for free, which I have and I will continue. I'm going to share um, what I make from both this and Patreon. I'll you be upfront about the money. That you make I'm money making. doing YouTube? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, dude. That's cool. I'm comfortable sharing those numbers. That can be public knowledge. I want to talk batteries, dude. Let's talk batteries. I really don't want to, but I think we all need batteries. And I think we need lithium iron phosphate batteries. They're non-flammable. Hey, you know how you make these bus bars? No. You go to the hardware store, and I have a, I have a newfound respect for people who swing hammers for a living. But you grab yourself some copper pipe and then you take it in the garage and you pound the hell out of it until it's flat and, and then drill it and now you got a bus bar that's interesting winter's coming people how much is that how much is that whole setup right there all in 500 no 400 uh this is probably 250 bucks oh if you bought that in a store it'd be like a thousand this is 78 amp hours it doesn't have low temp protection, but I'm using it in the house. So yes. 78 amp hours. If you bought this in lead acid, you would have to get 1300 amp hours to get the same capacity under high load. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you can do these cheap. I'm going to start building oh. some more. I hear the peeps are Family's home. home. Yep. Yeah. Family's home. Um, <laughs> so to your point, I don't. I didn't realize that you can't draw from lead acid that much. So my whole like backup, mm -hmm. I thought theoretically could power everything. It only can power my my return pumps and keep the water moving because it can't sustain it. If it's high load, right? If you're going to try to run a heater or something, it's just going to crap out. It's just going to sag. The voltage sags almost immediately, and then you're just going to lose it. Yep. That's why I go lithium iron phosphate. Lead acid to me is dead. Dead to me. And, and and for the prices of the iron uh, lithium iron phosphate, I mean, it should be dead to all of us. When I get, I'm thinking about actually building those for my trolling motors uh, yep. in my boat. Oh, I know a dude. A dude did it. A dude here did it because he's running a kayak with a trolling motor, and he built must two, rip. He he built two packs, and it it just and they're super light. You can carry it, right? Yes. Go, go ahead and lift a 78 amp hour lead acid. I do it. You I'm, know, I got I'm, two of them. I'm not swolt. Oh, it sucks. There's a lot of applications for them, and I just think people don't know that you can build them yourself. I mean, yeah, the, the forward voltage is a little bit lower than lead acid, but it's not that much lower. Higher. Lithium iron phosphate? Is it? Yeah. It's higher. Uh-huh. Oh, because you have four cells. But I've had three Trulies. I could be wrong, you know, like for I, formaldehyde. <laughs> all right, all right. I thought lead acid was thirteen point change, and 
the cells that would be closest to it would be 12.6. These for... are 14 and change, fully charged. Oh, dude. All right. Or yeah. 13.6. So that's whatever. still good, though. That's that's, Close... that's fine. Oh, lithium iron phosphate is fine. Um, don't use regular lithium because that catches on fire. Phosphate ones, Fires they don't catch on fire. Fires are bad. Fires are bad. Fifteen hundred dollars for a light that will work for a twenty-four inch by thirty-six inch tank. No, it doesn't. That is expensive. That's a lot of money. What did Neptune say? Twenty-four by thirty? Wrong. Yeah, they sure did. I okay, Jim, you want to talk about light testing? Why why aren't we doing like a more a two foot by two foot cube really sets up a single LED light for great advantage? Yeah. I think you should be doing either four foot by two or or like a forty gallon breeder. I don't know. I'm cool with a forty gallon breeder. That's you a know, common reef tank. You know how I like that too. I got, I got two of them just sitting downstairs. I got two Metris and two AliExpress bars lighting a forty breeder. I don't. I don't have because, spread problems. I don't know why because, spread is a thing. You can you can manage spread so easily. But you can buy Lucas lights. Poof, your spread issues are gone. And I think the only thing about spread that people don't realize is if you're going to do a big aquaculture facility, mm -hmm. having that many lights over a small area is, is expensive, you know. Um, but if you if it's, if your main tank is a really nice forty gallon breeder, get yourself two lights and, and avoid all that shadowing. Word. Or I would actually, if I was going to do it. I'd get either two, I'd do two of your modified Viper Spectres. That'd be really competitive. I, I would have to consider that. I think I can, and it's it's taken apart up in the cabinet behind me. I think I can make that thing pretty good. Oh, yeah. And I think at some point I'm going to start stomping on some, uh, uh, I don't know. I need to be careful what I do with that light. Because <laughs> I could turn it into a sky. You could. All you right. could. We've been on for a while. Bert's out. I know. Everybody's dropping off. They're Simple tired. aquariums. Can I please get you both on a live stream? You guys can talk, and I'll have a dictionary and translate for a dumb dumb. Yep, done. <laughs> done. Sign us up. I'm cool. Absolutely. Happy to. But you got to bring your Australian friends with you. And whatever Yo. that Tasmanian, Tasmanian person was, too. I, I get a gasoline lantern to light your reef tank. Filipino reefer. Being That's so sassy. He is yeah, sassy. sassy. Oh, God. Yeah, Lauren, anytime. Let us know. We'll have to figure that shadows. out, given the whole 12-hour business. Or, yeah, 12-hour business. We'll, True 12, yeah. We'll True figure 12. that out. All right, should we wrap up? Pro probably. So we end this by reiterating that we like influencers. We reiterate that we don't like bullying, especially the corporate type. Yeah. Yeah. And we challenge all of those out there to sh share uh, what you get for free. Note that you got it for free. And if you're feeling really sassy, talk about how much you're how much money you're making off of what you've got going nice. on. I'm cool with it. Yeah. This ain't and my jam. This is this is the this is the fun side, side hustle. hustle. Right? Side hustle. <laughs> there it is. And I think free fluencing things that you pay full price for that work really well and are very cheap. Loud you get more people. Loud wolf. My wolf. Right? Sodium Duda. sodium nitrate or trisodium phosphate if you need to yep. dose. And I can give you the formula that uh, matches the stuff you can buy that's too expensive. The 30 gallon a liter thing. Or $30 a gallon. A 30 gallon. 30, uh, $30 yeah, yeah. a liter. Be a leader, not a follower. Be sassy. But, you know, I think it, it, to reiterate, let's start. Let's start taking together. Let's start bringing these ideas as a team. Don't be scared. If you see some bullying and stuff like that, just keep doing it and let us know about it because 
you know, the personal attacks I think are off limits in this. This is a hobby. Like, yep. stop it. Yeah. It's silly. Be kind to people. Challenge companies. Right? But be kind and to chal- people. You know what? Challenge people, but in a respectful way. Yeah, sure. That's fine. Yep. You know, challenge. Hey, you, you said that calc sucks. Well, tell me why you think that. I, I don't think that, but why? And maybe you might realize, oh, hey, boom. That's a good valid point. Filipino reefer. Keeping our places clean. We need a Luca system tour. Oh, you've been paying attention to his Instagram lately? Because there's a system. Yeah, I um, I have some cord management still to do, and I think I, I think it's time. So F, F a bunch of cord management. Don't be well, don't be scared of Jake. He'll call you out. Don't be don't be, don't do it. He he did, oh, he did it to Bahama Lama. <laughs> my cord my cord management is for safety. It's something that we didn't talk about, but I'm going to be talking to Sky Harry for about yep. and Coral X is safety. And so for me, cord management doesn't mean neat and beautiful. It means safe. Agreed. I'm not here to win a beauty contest. My system is big and it's unruly. But it's going to be safe. Keep your batteries elevated. Yeah. Oh. And don't sh- don't touch the negative, the black black to the red red. Don't do that. That's bad. That lets the magic smoke out. We're done. Yes. I appreciate Please. your time, sir. Uh, it's been Thank cool. You. Thank you so much. This is a marathon stream. This is two hours. So, thank you for having me, man. Appreciate yeah, dude. It. Same. Uh, everybody, go ahead. Close us out, and I'll jump in after. All right. Be good, be good guys. <laughs> yeah, right on. Happy reefing, and be kind, everybody. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good rest of your weekend. Please hold while I figure out what buttons I need to push to make this go away. All right, y'all. Thanks.